the King Alfred plan, but I want to read a letter I wrote to you. I wrote seven of them today to members of the California Supreme Court. If you want to write to your assemblyman again about the death penalty or send a wire tonight, it would be appreciated. I think you should say in the letter again that there's innocent people, nothing like this should be mandatory. But there's a law, another thing that coming up before the Supreme Court, a decision this week, uh, September the 7th, regards the San Quentin Six, and it's a request by Hugo Pinnell, whose name I've mentioned on the program many times, to have the shackles removed from him at the San Quentin Six are going to trial on the George Jackson shootout that day where two guards and three inmates were killed. And these men go to court with chains so tight on their wrists that their wrists bleed and their legs are chained together and there's chains around their groins and their necks are chained and their hands are chained to their sides and they're chained to their chairs and then they're behind glass partitions and they're dropped when they're chained and when they're moved and they're provoked with verbal assaults, physical assaults, they're beat up in the holding rooms and uh, Hugo Bunnell has said that his rights, speaking for the others, he's asked the state Supreme Court to remove those shackles, that they violate his constitutional rights. And he's put in a plea for their pretrial hearing that will come up this Friday, September the 7th. So I wrote letters today, this morning, from 7 this morning until I came into the studio, to every member of the California Supreme Court. And in those, with those letters, I sent a package with a few articles and this, I'll read you what I wrote to them and uh, just mention the articles that are enclosed. And this is what I said to them. This is the Dear Justice Burke. And I sent one to Mr. Tabrina and Mr. Wright and Mosk and so forth. And uh, this is what I wrote. And you might write to the justice, any justice of the Supreme Court or go to your library and get the list of all of them if you're so inclined. And follow this up if you want to. I'd appreciate it if you would. What I said was, Dear Justice Burke, I'm writing to you regarding the shackles on Hugo Pinnell and other defendants in the San Quentin Six trial. Mr. Pinnell alleges his civil rights have been removed. They have been denied him throughout his confinement. The shackles should be removed at this point of time in U.S. history for the following reasons listed below. For one year, I have been researching into the charges placed against Mr. Pinnell from the time of his first arrest to the present date, and I'm writing a book illustrating how the title Most Dangerous Criminal in California was placed upon him by the way of various provocations, injustice, humili injustices, humiliations, and indignities. Guards and prison authorities create a fictitious image of Mr. Pinnell by manipulation, and his charges are based upon trials and appearances that make him appear to look guilty. Point number one, July 1970, Richard Nixon signed into existence an illegal intelligence operation which was intended as the future American Gestapo located inside the White House. Two, this interagency plan was never rescinded. December 1970 to January 1971, Judge Morrill Sharp from Seattle was at the White House considering the offer to head this secret group. No orders ever went out to rescind the plan. Three, the plan was to use all armed forces and intelligence agencies against radicals, anti-war protesters, Black Panthers, minorities. Radicals included Democratic candidates for 1972. July 1970, the same month that this agency went into operation, the Defense Department from the Pentagon assigned Stanford University to research a study on how to indu induce artificial paranoia in blacks. This 28-page study is one more example of future plans for blacks, minorities, and critics of government to be harassed. The use of, number five, the use of shackles in court, glass partitions between the defendant and the audience, physical searches, photographing every visitor to the court trials is part of the paranoia in the jury's mind. Six, an inmate was testified that he was paid $1,000 to stage a jailbreak in San Jose to affect the jury of the Angela Davis trial. One more inmate was killed, as well as James Carr, that same week for those purposes, to scare the jury. Seven, the Marine, Marine Court killings. This is where Judge Haley was killed, and the Rochelle McGee followed that trial, an Angela Davis trial. The Marine Court 
killings and the San Quentin murder of George Jackson were known in advance by the Los Angeles police and the California law enforcement. Eight, the purpose of allowing these killings to proceed and the murders that followed was to bring into law just those things which will become necessary to assure the confinement of political prisoners from that day on, the court trimmings and the prison isolation and the chains. Nine, the LAPD and Attorney General Ever Young, Evel Younger, are directly linked into the White House Super Military Police Agency, and they were very open about discussing their Gestapo. Ten, in mid-October 1971, Chief of Police Davis from Los Angeles, L.A., from L.A., Ed Davis, former CCS criminal conspiracy section officer Daniel Mahoney, former LAPD in charge of CCS Robert Keel, and L.A. Special FBI agent Edward Birch had secret meetings in San Bernardino, California that related to those Gestapo plans titled Squad 19 for the California element. Number 11, the same Sergeant Mahoney that attended the San Bernardino meetings allegedly killed Jonathan Jackson up at Marin County shootout. As scheduled, the LAPD had foreknowledge. Uh, this is from Los Angeles with love to the Marin County. Number 12, Ed Eldridge Cleaver embarrassed the prisons and USA racism by writing a book. From that day on, the word in the California prisons was to kill George Jackson before we get another Cleaver. Many offers of parole went out to prisoners if they would do this for them. Hugo Pinnell, writer, poet, friend of George Jackson, was singled out for the same reasons that the other enemies, Cleaver and George, were murdered. He's a defendant now in this trial and wants his shackles off. Judge J. McMillan in North Carolina stated that the First, the Fourth, the Fifth, and the Fourteenth Amendments to the Constitution were denied white citizens, students, during the Nixon-Billy Graham rally. But who speaks out for the blacks or the prisoners or the minorities whose constitutional rights have been violated while they are confined or arrested or even on the streets? Fourteen, the National Security Council, with their King Alfred plan to kill blacks and the heliotrope plan of the Pentagon to kill Indians, Mexicans, Latinos, seems to be functioning and profiting through the court system. Fifteen, will the courts in California please halt this madness? Shackles are not to protect society or the courts or the judges. Their purpose is to affect the juries to increase provocations and scare the jury to believe that these are dangerous animals that are chained up. Herbert Mullen, confessed killer of 14 in Santa Cruz, who happens to be white, went to court in a proper suit with no shackles because he is white. He was not provoked by guards or beaten up. The browns and blacks are made to appear as dangerous animals. Please stop this, signed Mae Russell. And then I enclosed in the letter for them a few pages from that Stanford study that was done in 1970 on how to induce artificial paranoia, which is what none of us needed in this nation in 1970, because you see, at, this was the same month that Richard Nixon signed in the law that you could enter a home it was legal to rob, to open your mail, to wiretap your conversations, to enter and arrest you without a warrant. This was all happening. But Stanford from the Defense Department had a study with questions like, uh, do you worry? Do they tap my phone? Does it frighten you to be observed? Uh, do you worry if, if you've got something on people? You know, it, it's about the mafia. Are you afraid of them? Uh, do you have incriminating evidence against anybody? And this is one page from a study about wiretapping, being frightened, uh, getting evidence on somebody. Uh, in, Rockefeller just put through in New York a a $1,000 reward to inform on somebody who has drugs or grass or even LSD to send them to prison so people can be informing on you. But in 1970, they wanted more artificial paranoia. So the Defense Department, I sent the members of the Supreme Court some of that. I sent them a copy of a lawsuit placed by Alan Mancino, who was in the yard when George Jackson was killed, and he has placed a $450,000 suit against the guards in San Quentin. Mancino said he's now on parole and he lives in, in Seattle, but he claims in the suit that when the firing stopped in the yard, the day when these men were killed, 
He and other prisoners were stripped and chained and forced to lie naked in a courtyard lawn. He was shot by a prison guard. He was left for more than an hour without medical attention. He charged he was finally uh, treated and forced to undergo surgery to have the bullet out without any anesthetic. And then he was locked in a medical cell where a hood was put over his head, and he was beaten until he made a statement against the fellow inmates in the adjustment center, and that was the basis upon which the San Quentin Six was to be arrested. He was later transferred to a Nevada state prison, held incommunicado in a medical care, and he was told he would suffer if he made any waves. He is living in Seattle. He was never allowed to talk to any newsman, and now he want, he's placed a lawsuit, uh, $450,000, against the guards in San Quentin. I had sent them another article from te testimony of Mr. Mo Camancho, president of the California Congressional Officers Association, saying how they were going to take, members of Congress came out to see what was happening in our California prisons, and Mr. Camacho testified, we're going to take the revolutionary violent inmate and separate him from the general population, that he can't mingle with the other people, that if they have opinions or reasons that would be a source of revolutionary activity, they should be separated. He said Attorney General Evel Younger only last week said, circumstances of incarceration provide a situation conducive to enlisting men into revolutionary movements. So we have to remove those political prisoners before uh, they are an influence on the other prisoners. So the recommendation was that the revolutionary inmates be housed apart from the confronting inmate population, the faster the better, as a solution to holding the prison bloodbath. So these particular men on, in the adjustment centers are isolated 23 and a half hours a day from every part of the prison population, like animals and beasts, and can see nobody, no movie, no television, no music, no posters, nothing to decorate their cells. They can't move about because a great deal of them are innocent, and if they cry their innocence, they say, oh, you're getting too smart-ass, you're political, out you go. I also included in the suit, in this package for them, a $1 million civil rights suit placed last June by Hugo Pinnell, Fleeta Drumgo, David Johnson, John Larry Spain, Willie Tate, and Louis Talamance. They asked for an injunction prohibiting the prison officials from further acts of harassment and violence. For a year and a half, they've been beat up, that two years less a month of constant brutalization in the Adjustment Center. They've placed a lawsuit uh, against the officials, but the courts don't even answer these things, where they're beaten and threatened, and every day their life is threatened in the Adjustment Center. They sent a copy of the decision of Judge James, Judge James McMillan down in North Carolina on the uh, constitutional amendments that were denied uh, people to assemble at the Billy Graham uh, meeting with President Nixon and saying if those were denied, these white middle class students imagine what's going on in our adjustment center. And then I enclosed an article, a study that was done by Philip Zimbardo from Stanford who simulated prison conditions, confinement, a guard and a prisoner with middle class white Stanford students it was to last two weeks. At the end of one week, they had to stop the experiment because the students became so violent and in state of shock and rash and pain and hurting and beating each other. The guards took on the role of being brutal, and the, the prisoners became depressed and violent and aggressive, locked up. So after six days, these people couldn't stand the experiment. This was done for the Navy. And He's been getting a lot of write-ups, and Zavardo, I wrote to him, said he would testify at one of these trials for the men. But um, they could, Stanford students couldn't stand the confinement that these men have had for, well, Hugo Pinnell's been in prison nine years, and since the George Jackson shootout, it's been uh, two years this July. But they come in like drain, like animals beat, with skin searches, every bit of them is examined physically and uh, they have to be naked and spread their behind, and they pull their hair and do everything when they leave their cell just to get the chains on. So there's nothing that they could do in the courtroom when they're not allowed to walk in and let the jury see them as human beings at all. They're just, the zoos have more natural habitats than our prisons, and so that's, that's what's been going on in my head. I've been writing a lot of letters, and I feel very badly because... Um, America can't see that, that what is happening to these people is 
is being done by the most evil forces that have been on this earth and, and they not only brutalize innocent people but the